Hello YouTube and welcome back to What the Math. Today we're starting chapter 9C, Theoretical Probability. In the last video we did uh, experimental probability and now we're actually going to compare them and see what the difference is. And in a nutshell, here is what the difference is. So let's just look at this coin right here. Uh, and essentially, this is the simplest problem. So what is the chance that I'm going to get heads if I toss this coin? And the chance is, of course, 50%. And this is what we call a, th a theoretical probability. So what is the chance of something happening knowing um, what you're using to get that chance? So for example, a die has one in six odds of getting um, a number. For example, number two, uh, a coin has one in two chance. Um, something like a spinner in a casino, uh, if you're looking for a specific number, it's something like 1 in 36 uh, odds of getting that particular number. Now, the difference is that in experimental probability, you then start performing your experiment, that is tossing the coin uh, and getting a, uh, oh no, I got a tail. So I was looking for heads, but I got a tail. All right, so let's do it again. I got a tail again. So something's happening here. So theoretical probability and experimental probability are not always the same. So there's always some kind of a difference. But as you uh, continue repeating your experiment many, many, many times, essentially uh, infinity times, your experimental probability will approach the values of your theoretical probability. So even though I might be getting five tails in a row on my coin, as I continue doing my experiment, I will eventually get to a point where I'll be getting 50% heads and 50% tails. And to make this a little bit more visual, let's look at this example. So basically, this is the formula. Uh, the probability of something happening is the number of members of the event divided by the total number of possible outcomes. What this means is, let's take a look at this spinner right here. Uh, so this spinner has eight possible outcomes. So the bottom of the equation will be divided by eight. And so let's just say I'm looking for what is the chance that I'll get an even number. So how many even numbers are there? The number of members of the event A, there are four even numbers. So the probability here is four out of eight, which is 0 0.05. Um, let's take a look at another example. So what about an, just a number? What about uh, number sevens? How many members of number sevens are there? There's only one. It's right here. There's only one number seven. So here, the probability of getting a seven is one out of eight. Ooh, one out of eight, which is essentially 0.125. So that's the probability of getting this particular member. Uh, and just a reminder, you can express this four different ways. So this can be expressed as probability. So this is a probability. It can also be expressed as chance, which is 50% chance or 12.5% chance. You can also express this as odds. So here it would be um, one in two, and here it would be one in eight. Or you can also express it as a fraction. So in this case, it would be um, one half, and here it would be one eighth. So these are the four possible ways you can express your answer. Um, all right, so let's take a look at, look at some more examples. And specifically, let's take a look at that example that where there are actually two coins or two things, two things happening at the same time. So we have two coins that are, that are being flipped at the same time, and we're looking for a certain type of probability. So um, for coins, it's actually easy to do it without really graphing anything. But for some of the other things, you may want to use something called um, two-dimensional grid, so 2D grid, or you can also use something called a probability tree. We're going to, I'm going to show you both just so that you learn how they work. For a 2D grid, what you need to do is you basically have, um, columns and rows. And here on the left side, you're going to write all the possibilities for the first coin. So that is, we have tails or we have heads. And on the bottom part, you're going to do the same for the second coin, which is basically once again, tails and heads. We're now going to draw these imaginary lines going between them like this. And what we're looking for is the crossings. And crossings are basically all the possibilities of getting a particular event. So tails, tails right here, heads, heads right here. And this is actually um, quite surprising, at least for some people, this would be surprising that heads, tails actually is more likely to occur than heads, heads or tails, tails. So essentially, 
getting both heads and tails is a lot more likely than uh, just ta tails tails or just heads heads. Likewise, if you remember the example from the class when we were using two uh, dies that were two die that we're actually tossing, um, if you express it in the same way, you'll see that number seven right here in the middle, it's already uh, circled for you. It is the most uh, commonly occurring number. So this is the highest possible number to occur if you continuously toss two die over and over and over again. With the numbers six, seven, and eight uh, actually being more than 50% uh, likely to occur out of all other numbers. So these are the most commonly occurring numbers if you're tossing two die at the same time. All right, so this was 2D grid, and this is actually useful for when you have two of something, two of events occurring at the same time. If you have more than two events, if you have three events, it's usually useful to use a probability tree. So for example, let's just say I have not two, but three coins. So I have coin one, coin two, and coin three that are being tossed at the same time. You can't really use a grid to, for that because you'll need to make a 3D grid, but you could use a uh, probability tree. So here, we first we start with the first coin and the chances for the first coin are heads and tails. Then from here, we go into the second coin. So now we have two more heads and tails. And finally for the third coin, we have two more. And this will show us all the possible outcomes. So for example, there, this is the first possible outcome, heads, 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 so we can write it right here. Then uh, we have our second possible outcome, heads, heads, tails, right, right here, and so on. And this is the last outcome. So you can see that for three coins, there are actually eight possible outcomes. Um, and expressing this with the, with the tree makes it a little bit more visual, a little bit easier to understand. And a lot of the times you'll actually be asked on a test to, to make a tree and to try to find a probability for a certain event. So for example, what if you asked to find um, what is the chance of getting uh, two heads and a tail? So two heads and a tail. So what you do is you look at all your possible events and you look at two heads and a tail right here, two heads and a tail right here. And I think that's it. And so the chance here is two out of eight which is essentially 25%. So it's a 25% chance that you'll get two heads and a tail. And this is how probability tree works. And just to say this one more time, so for two events, when you have two events, you may want to use a 2D grid just to make it a little bit easier. And for three or more events, uh, you may want to use a probability tree. And the last topic we're going to take a look at is complementary probability. Um, now, it may sound a little bit redundant and not very useful, but it's actually one of the more useful topics in probability because a lot of the times we use complementary probability to find uh, something happening. For example, well, so let's start with the definition. So what is complementary probability? Uh, essentially, it's the opposite of probability. So the chance of getting one out of six on a die is, so P of one out of six is one out of six. Now, complementary probability of getting one on a die, so P prime of one is five of six. So what is the chance that we're not going to get a one? Well, it's five out of six. Uh, well, it might not sound very useful, but it's actually super useful for when you have several events occurring at the same time. We'll, we're going to discuss this in the next part, but essentially what you need to remember is um, the chance of something not happening is very, very, very important. Um, usually when you're calculating probability, you're using this, um, especially comp um, compound probabilities when there's many events happening at the same time, you're going to be using this and not this. So this is only important for simple probability. This is really important for compound probability. Um, so complementarity is essentially a, a concept that you just have to understand. So essentially it's chance of not happening, something that is not happening. It's the opposite of chance of happening. So like in a previous example, when we we're using two coins, we were tossing coins and we we're looking for um, what is the chance of getting two heads and a tail. And then we found that the chance was, or the probability was uh, two out of eight or uh, one out of four or 0. 0.25. Uh, so now if you look at, the, and this was a probability, probability of HHD. Uh, now what if we we're looking for 
p prime of h h d. Well, uh, using this formula, we can find that it is going to be 1 minus 0.25, which is essentially 0.75 or 75% chance of not getting two heads and a tail. Um, so just remember this little formula for the future reference and for the next part that we're going to discuss uh, in the next lesson. And before we finish, let's take a look at a real life example of complementary probability, specifically um, example of you know, people play in the lottery. So a lot of people play lottery, they buy lottery tickets every day. So this is your ticket with numbers on it. And the, um, some people actually have this pattern where they don't change numbers. They think that by not changing numbers, they'll, they'll actually win. Uh, and this might be true, but so let's actually try to use uh, probability and complementary probability to try to find if this is true. But, uh, we're not going to use lottery. We're actually going to do this in class, but for, um, for this example, let's just use a die. So, Let's just say that I, I'm tossing a die and I want to see um, what is the chance of, if I choose a number, let's just say I choose number five, what is the chance that after playing die eight times, I'm going to get at least one five? In other words, I'm going to win. So what is the chance that at least one five will come up if I keep tossing my die? So after eight throws after eight rows. Now immediately, immediately a lot of people will actually try to do this. They will say, okay, so it's one six plus one six plus one six, eight times. And right away you'll see that the answer is actually eight six. So it's more than hundred percent. So that's, that's wrong. That's, that can't be true. Uh, okay. So we're probably doing something wrong. Let's try, let's try this again. Let's try multiplying it this time. So maybe it's one six times one six times one six, eight times. And if you actually try to calculate this on your calculator, you'll find a number that's ridiculously small. It's like 0 0.0000000000 something. There's one in there somewhere. Um, and so yeah, that's kind of wrong too, because chances should be increasing, right? Not decreasing when you're throwing continuously. So what we have to use here is we have to actually use the complementary rule, complementary probability to try to find uh, the answer to this. So, we have to rephrase this question. We're not looking for uh, what is the chance of getting at least one five. We're getting, we're looking at a chance of not getting a five uh, eight times. So let's take a look at what is the chance of not getting a five eight times. In other words, to the power of eight. So what we're looking for is five six times five six times five, six, eight times. And the answer to this is approximately 0.23 or in other words, 23%. Now that's not getting a five. So how do we find the probability of getting a five? Well, using the rule right here, we look at one minus 0.23 and this will give us the answer of 77% or 0.77. So there's a 77% chance that you'll get at least one five uh, if you continuously throw die uh, or dice eight times in a row. Um, and this is how you use complementary prob probability to try to find certain events. Now in class, just for fun, we're actually going to try to do the same with the lottery. So what is the chance of winning the lottery if you continuously play for let's just say like a year every day? And you'll see that the chance there is pretty low. So don't play lottery because it's a waste of money. But anyway, so thank you for watching. This is it for complementary probability and theoretical probability from chapter nine. Thank you for watching. Good luck to you and bye bye.